Okay. Can we start? So, my name is Nays, and this is my name spelled out in the American <laughs> Sign Language Alphabet. Uh, this is all about hands because I've been using hands recently in my art, and hands are expressive. They can spell, they can speak, they can tell stories, they can hug. Uh, some bad hands can hurt, as we heard previously. 10,000 years ago in a cave in Argentina, these, these hand prints were discovered. You notice that it goes, uh, back then, uh, people didn't make chin prints or nose prints or butt prints. They used their hands. Uh, hands were people's identities. I think it said a lot about them, and each hand has a different design in it, representing a different person. So even back then, this, I worked in a bakery after college in the 1960s, and it was during the civil rights era, and there was a lot of strife going on, and I hated my job, and I hated my bosses, and I wanted to do something with my hands for the first time as an artist, and I decided to integrate the loaves of bread, and essentially I took a pumpernickel loaf and I put it, inserted it into white loaves, and uh, I sent them into the wrapping machines, and I'd go home at night, dreaming of the family in the morning, opening up that loaf of bread while the civil rights stuff was going on on TV, and uh, having to realize, now uh, somebody who knows what it's like to be a, a dark slice and a white loaf is the great Will Smith, and the reason he's up here is because I heard, in the, in the height of his success, I heard an interview with him, and he said that in order to become a better actor, he realized he had to become a better person, and that inspired me, and this is uh, one of the first works I did with hands, it was sculptural, but I'm not a sculptor, but anyway, it was a, it's a plaster hand with a heart carved in it, and it's about the power of love, and it's breaking through the steel plate. Um, that was the only sculpture I ever did, as you'll see. Um, in college, I fooled around with drawing, and this shows the power of a clenched fist and the harm and the, and the damage that the, the hand can do when, when used uh, without good intent. So that was just an example. I was angry at the time, and that's, I never hit anyone, but that's how I expressed it in those drawings. Uh, this is me, this is from a silent movie, I put myself in it, basically I'm holding hands with a clock. Um, and this inspired, this movie actually inspired me to, to do a piece about time using hands. And I took nine clocks, it's what, nine clocks at Staples, and I inserted uh, a poem into them with a silhouette that says, Regret for the things we did can be tempered by time, but it is regret for the things we did not do that is inconsolable. And the figures starting at the top left, they're a couple holding hands, and slowly as time goes on, they drift apart and their hands separate. Uh, I did a series on hands, the other thing about hands, great storytelling that hands is concealing and revealing. You know, what is it? Are you opening? And anyway, I did a series on those. You know, a closed hand is concealing, but when it opens, it's revealing and vice versa. And it can reveal a lot of magical, personal things. I went to a homeless shelter in Westport, and they, uh, with permission, allowed me to take pictures. And I asked these uh, homeless people who are basically invisible to the rest of the community, I asked them to hop to play peekaboo. And every one of their hands, they use their hands differently. I did not direct them, but uh, that was their way of hiding. And this is another series on hands and how they tell a story in sequence. And they, you could mix these up in any order and make up your own story, but you know, hands are they're, they're healing, they're embracing, they're, they're angry, they're accusing, and finally they're reconciling. Uh, there's a project in Westport called Tunnel Vision. Uh, it's open, it's been open for five years, and it's a tunnel with 16 images in it of couples holding hands, so uh, with objects. So I explored this a little further. In the upper left is a, a couple that celebrating their 50th anniversary together. Uh, the one on the right is a daughter showing her mother a little pendant that says, Be the Change. The lower left here is a granddaughter revealing her grandmother's concentration camp tattoo. And on the right is a gay couple uh, interlocking hands. I didn't take this picture, but it, it started me on another path about trying to express compassion. This is a picture of teenagers consoling themselves after a gun sh after a school shooting. And again, you know, hands, you don't need to see their faces. 
the hands are connecting them. And I wanted to take this picture I did take at an event. This is a developmentally disabled young man uh, high-fiving his counselor. And uh, I mean, the look between them is wonderful, but they are really connecting. Their hands are connecting them as humans, and you don't really even need to see their faces. But if I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching, or cool one pain, or help one fainting robin unto his nest again, I shall not live in vain. This is a poem by Emily Dickinson that to me expressed compassion in the most simple, direct, powerful way. And I wanted to speak this with my photography. And this is one. So what I did was photograph 30 individuals speaking uh, in sign language one word from the poem each. This is just an example of one of them, a young man named Derege, who's, who's signing shall not as part of the poem. But there's 30 people signing every word from the poem, as you'll see. It's called Signs of Compassion. And this now resides uh, at the Montefiore Hospital in um, New York. It, um, you know, it's a silent poetry reading, and people talk about art speaking to them. This is speaking to you, to everyone, uh, in a very silent way. And I will leave you with this last message, uh, which we can all take home. So give yourself a hand.